Welcome to this presentation on the emerging economic and market scenario. We shall specifically look at the high level of volatility in the market now and how investors should respond to this high level of volatility. 2017 was an exceptional year for stock markets globally. We had a global bull run. And a unique feature of this global bull run was that it was a bull run characterized by the least instability, least volatility. In the US, the volatility in the market was the lowest in history. In India also, we had an excellent market with Nifty returning 29 percentage. The returns from the small and mid caps have been more than 40 percentage on an average. And these returns came with a very level of low level of volatility. 2018 has already proved to be different. Markets have turned volatile globally. In February, the Dow Jones crashed by more than 1000 points twice. It impacted markets globally. Nifty is now down by 9 percentage from the peak. So in the coming months also, we are likely to witness a very high level of volatility. What are the factors causing this volatility and how should investors respond to this heightened volatility in the market? These are the relevant and important questions. During the flight of an aeroplane, the plane experiences either headwinds or tailwinds. Headwinds are unfavorable tailwinds are favorable. Similarly, the market also experiences unfavorable headwinds and favorable tailwinds. Presently, we are in a very interesting situation where there are very strong headwinds and equally strong, perhaps stronger uh, tailwinds also. So, the market is presently caught in the cross currents of uh, very strong headwinds and very strong tailwinds. Which of these winds will prove to be stronger? Only time can tell. So let us look at the major headwinds and major tailwinds impacting the markets and are likely to impact the market in the months to follow in 2018. The major headwind which the global market faces is the inflation scare in the US. Globally, the markets are valued at very high levels. Valuations are very high. And at very high valuations, markets are vulnerable to corrections. Any trigger can cause a correction. So a major headwind right now is the inflation scare in the US. Inflation is inching up. It, even now it is not uh, in dangerous territory, but it is slowly inching up. And when inflation goes up, the Federal Reserve System, the American Central Bank will raise interest rates. It is well known and discounted by the markets that the Fed will raise interest rates three times this year. But the market has a concern that inflation may overshoot the Fed's estimate and uh, Fed might raise rates four times or even five times this year. If that happens, there can be flight of capital from emerging markets, particularly emerging markets like India will be vulnerable to major correction. So this is a major headwind. High valuations, vulnerability to corrections, and the inflation scare in the US. Another major headwind is concerns regarding a trade war. President Trump is an unconventional politician. The US administration recently imposed 25 percentage import duty on steel and 10 percentage import duty and on aluminum. Earlier, the US administration had imposed 30 percentage tariffs on solar panel imports. Also, President Trump scrapped the 
Trans Pacific Treaty and also he single handedly has uh, forged a renegotiation of NAFTA. NAFTA is the North American Free Trade Agreement. It's a free trade agreement between America, Mexico and Canada. So President Trump has unilaterally forced a renegotiation of NAFTA. These are all uh, protectionist measures. Protection is not good for uh, global trade. It is not good for the global economy. Such protectionist measures has uh, the potential to negatively impact the emerging robustness in the global economy the global economic recovery that is presently underway. So yes, is a very strong, the largest economic power in the world. They can get away with uh, some triggers like this. But beyond a point, other countries might be forced to retaliate. If uh, the US administration continues with these kinds of protectionist measures, after some time, other countries like China or the European Union uh, might be forced to retaliate with uh, countermeasures like imposing duties on imports from America. This can lead to a trade war. Even now, the probability is very low. The global consensus is that the US is only posturing for a better negotiation. But we don't know. These are all probabilities. So if a trade war breaks out, that will impact the global economy, impact global trade and impact stock markets also globally. The third major headwind is the political headwind. In India, the markets are still working on the assumption, valued on the assumption that the NDA government and the Prime Minister Modi will continue to be in office even after 2019 elections. The market has not discounted a non-NDA government. I feel even now it is NDA advantage, advantage NDA even now. But the political landscape in India is changing very fast. The recent elections, particularly the by-elections in UP, have sent out some unexpected election signals. So, uh, it appears that uh, a unified opposition will be a force to reckon with in the coming elections. So, the political, this political factor is an important factor. The market does not like uncertainty. Market loves certainty. So, so long as there is uncertainty on the political front, the market volatility will uh, continue. Therefore, watch out for developments on the political front, particularly the election outcomes uh, in Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh towards the end of the year are very, very crucial. So this is one area that uh, we should be watching for. Now let us come to the uh, tailwinds for the economy and markets, the favorable uh, trends for the economy and markets. The most powerful uh, tailwind for the markets and the economy is the health of the global economy. The global economy is in fine shape. Global economy is robust. Economic growth in 2017 was the best in the last 10 years. The best after the global economic uh, crisis of 2008-9. After the global recession of 2008-9, we had the best growth in 2017. In 2018, global growth is expected to be better. There are no major trouble spots globally. And if this growth continues, it will be good for corporate earnings. Corporate earnings will improve. And when corporate earnings improve, uh, the, the stock market valuations will come down. And there will be further scope for uh, uh, valuations to improve and stock markets also to improve. So this is the best uh, uh, a tailwind for the market, the, the strength of the global economy and the recovery in global trade. Coming to India, there are clear signs that the Indian economy is on a very strong rebound. 
after the poor show in 2017-18 uh the economy is bouncing back the uh, troubles associated with gst and uh, gst implementation and demonetization are behind us and the economy is recovering very fast it is now safe to assume that the economy bottomed out in the first quarter of 2017-18 when the gdp growth rate bottomed out to 5.7 percentage after that in the second quarter we had a growth rate of 6.5 percentage and in the third quarter it boomed to 7.2 percentage q4 is also likely to be about 7 percentage and there is a global consensus now that uh, india will be the fastest growing large economy in the world in 2018-19 also again uh, india will be uh, recovering its uh, position as the fastest growing large economy in the world also the crucial macroeconomic indicators point to sustained recovery the index of industrial production is about 7 percentage for 3 months in a row investment is picking up very fast inflation is very low cpi inflation is at 4.4 percentage wpi inflation is at 2.84 percentage so that means inflation is under control and therefore the rbi will not be forced to raise the interest rates in 2018 so this is very good for the markets so investment is picking up growth is likely to pick up and earnings are likely to grow corporate earnings to gdp is a very crucial macroeconomic indicator presently it is at 4 percentage the average is 6 percentage so we are likely to move from the low of 4 percentage to 6 percentage corporate earnings to gdp ratio so that means we are likely to witness sustained earnings growth in the coming years in india this will lower the valuations and leave enough scope for the uh, stock markets to go up but that is in 2019 and beyond 2018 because of the many headwinds that i mentioned is likely to be volatile there are other headwinds also like the pnb scam its impact on investment the loss of credibility in the financial system because of the scam and the regulatory overkill following the scam can also impact the sentiment so because of these factors markets will continue to be volatile even though the prospects are very good from 2019 onwards so what should be the investment strategy the appropriate investment strategy uh, under the present circumstances of heightened volatility this is not the time to make huge bulk investments unless the market corrects substantially the markets are down by around 9 percentage nifty is down by 9 percentage if it corrects substantially let us say by 15 percentage that might give an opportunity to make uh, big bulk investments till then it is not the right time to make bulk investments this is the right time to make systematic investment calibrated investments in small amounts systematically if bulk investment is to be made it should be made through systematic transfer plans investors should never stop their sips because the benefit of sips presently will be available from 2019 onwards because the lower prices now it will result in substantial appreciation in nav in future so don't stop sips make investments on a systematic basis buy good quality stocks preferably large caps can buy uh, good quality mid caps avoid small caps unless you are very sure about the potential of the company can make investments systematically in small caps through mutual fund so the investment climate will be very stormy in the coming months also the investment weather will be unfavorable but we should learn from the farmers the farmer will brave the uncertain weather will brave the unfavorable weather and prepare the field and sow the seeds just like that braving the unfavorable weather right now 
investors should be making systematic investments in quality this is the right time to make systematic investment on a calibrated basis best wishes and thank you very much